I became depressed. And the reason why I became so sad was because there was this girl who I liked who did not like me back. And it really broke my heart because I felt as though she was my soulmate. I felt like we were made for each other. Like every time I'd see her in the hallways, I would feel a little hypnotized. You know that feeling you get when you see someone that you have a crush on? It's like that high feeling. You know what I'm talking about? That high feeling? That's what I felt. Every time I'd see her, I felt that high feeling. And that high feeling was so intense, the physical attraction was so strong, that I thought it was a sign that this was true love. And so when she rejected me, I felt as though my heart split in half, and I became very disappointed. But an interesting thing happened. As time went by, and as I grew older and more mature, I began to look back over that experience, and I began to see something that I never saw previously. You see, it wasn't until later on in my life, as I was looking back over my teenage years, that I began to realize that when I was a teenager, I was very immature. And if I would have gotten into a relationship with that girl at that time, because of my immaturity, I would have ended up making some bad decisions. I would have ended up giving in to certain temptations. I would have ended up making some bad choices that would have caused a lot of pain in my life. The same pain that I see going on in the lives of a lot of people. It's interesting how at the time, I was so very heartbroken and disappointed because of her rejection. But now as I look back over that experience, I realize that her rejection was really a blessing in disguise. Because you see, she was involved with some very unhealthy things, like drugs and alcohol. And I was aware of it, but I overlooked it because I was so very physically attracted to her. It's amazing. I overlooked the fact that, 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 that she would have had a very unhealthy, negative influence on me. I overlooked it because I was so very physically attracted to her. It's amazing how physical attraction clouds judgment. Holler if you hear me. Uh -huh. Physical attraction clouds judgment. Have you noticed that when you become very physically attracted to someone, your mindset gets a little cloudy. So we have to be very careful. Be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you wish for. Because often in life, the things that look good to us are not good for us. Holler if you hear me. Holler. Often in life, the things that look good to us are not good for us. Things are not always what they seem to be. In fact, very often, even poison is wrapped in beautiful wrapping paper. Holler if you hear me. Holler. Even poison is wrapped in beautiful wrapping paper. So we have to see beyond the shell. See beyond the shell. And it's difficult because we, our culture is so very visual. We get so hypnotized by the physical appearance of things. But we have to see beyond the shell. Please always remember this. Do not follow your heart. Lead your heart. Holler if you hear me. Uh, do not follow your hearts, lead your hearts. And what I mean by that is do not blindly follow your hearts. Of course you want to follow your dreams and your goals and your passions in life, but do not blindly follow your hearts because there are times in life in which even your own hearts will try to deceive you. There are times in life in which even your own hearts will try to lead you down the wrong path. Do not follow your hearts, lead your hearts. In other words, what I'm saying is this. Do not live your life based on your emotions. Live your life based on your principles, the wise principles. Because have you noticed, people who live their life based on their emotions are always in some type of drama. Holler if you hear me. Holler. If you live your life based on your emotions, you will always be in some type of drama. The key to living a very fulfilled life, one of the major keys to living a very fulfilled life, is learning how to live your life based on your principles instead of living your life based on your emotions. Your emotions can get you into a lot of trouble. Holler if you hear me. Holler. Your emotions can get you into a lot of trouble. Do not trust your emotions. Live your life based on your principles. It's, very, it's, a very, it's a very difficult, easy thing to say, but it's, it's, it is very difficult to apply that to our lives. It takes time. Because, and especially for me, because so often I would get so very, like, hypnotized by the physical attraction, right? 
and I would feel as though I was judging, I was, I was basing my value based on, on you know, um, how other people perceived me. And it's a, very, it's a very difficult way to live if you live trying to live up to the expectations of others, right? Because it's amazing how if you live for people's approval, you will die by their rejection. Holler if you hear me. If you live for people's approval, you will die by their, re their rejection. You know, when I was, so as I mentioned to you, when I was going through, as I was growing up, right, I had social issues, right? Reading problems, I had speech problems, I had a stuttering issue, I had self-esteem issues. I had issues when I was growing up and um, constantly receiving rejection socially, and everything. Now remember though, a major turning point in my life is when I shifted my perspective regarding what it really means to be beautiful. See, because of my acne and everything, I just, I was, I was always, I felt very insecure. And I remember when I was in college, I, I had a part-time job working at the Disability Support Center. And my job was to assist students who had physical disabilities. And one of the girls I assisted was a blind girl. She was blind and also she had um, some mental issues. And I remember it was around Thanksgiving and I remember I invited her to my family's Thanksgiving dinner. And she came and she had fun and, and she felt loved by my family. And at the end of the night, when I was dropping her off at home, she turned to me and she said something to me that I'll never forget. And it really impacted me so much and it really changed my perspective regarding the issue of self-concept. Keep in mind, she's blind, and she turned to me and she said, Lance, you are so beautiful. And it was the first time that someone had ever called me beautiful. And, you know, and it really impacted me because it helped me to see that this blind girl calling me beautiful, it showed me that true beauty has nothing to do with our physical appearance. True beauty has everything to do with our level of kindness our hearts, what's on the inside. Beauty is, is what beauty does. Holler, you hear me? And it just really showed me that, that I, I could be loved if I give love. You see, for a long time, I used to think that in order to be beautiful, in order to feel loved, I had to receive love. I had to receive approval. That's what I thought. And so as I desperately tried to chase after love, it always eluded me. But when I started to realize that the way to, to receive love is to give love, that changed everything for me. Because what we give to others always comes back to us multiplied. Holler if you hear me. Holler. What we give to others always comes back to us multiplied. And so when, when, when I shifted my mindset and when I started to realize that if I go out and instead of always being so self-conscious and always worried about what other people are thinking about me, if I go out and I just focus on giving, focus on trying to encourage others and focus on trying to love others and not worry about how they're responding to me, but just to focus on giving, then I realize that as I give, I receive so much more that comes back to me. The gift of giving is better than a gift received. Because when we, give, when we focus on giving to others, we subconsciously confirm to ourselves that we have more than enough. And it's that sense of abundance that makes us truly happy. But anytime we're desperately trying to get other people's approval, that's when we'll always live in a state of sadness. The secret to living is giving. And so I realized that I can create my own emotional atmosphere by focusing on giving the emotions that I want to receive. The secret to living is giving. We know that we're beautiful when we focus on giving love and giving encouragement. 